Hey guys, this is Lauren the Cheesy Bard, back with Doki Doki Literature Club. I started a new game. I'm a dong. Uh, let's load instead. Ah, okay, well, whatever. I've gotten a little more comfortable here over the past couple days. Entering the club room, the usual scene greets me. Hi, Lauren. Yo, Sayori. Looks like you're in a good mood today. <laughs> I'm just still not used to you being in the club, that's all. I see. That's a pretty simple thing to get you in a good mood. But I guess it's always the simple things with you anyway. Speaking of which, I'm kinda hungry. Will you come with me to buy a snack? No thanks. Eh? Th that's not like you at all. I have my reasons. Why don't we take a look at your purse, Iori? Eh? Why that all of a sudden? No reason, really. I just wanted to look at it. Ah. Uh, uh. Sayori nervously retrieves her coin purse. She fumbles with the latch and gets it open. Then she turns it upside down and lets its contents spill out onto the desk. Only two small coins fall out. Oh, I see how it is. <laughs> I knew it. I could see right through you, Sayori. That's not fair. How did you even know? It's simple. If you had enough money in the first place, you would have bought a snack before coming to the club room. So either you're not hungry and want an excuse to take a walk, or you plan to conveniently forget that you spent all your money so that I would lend you some. But there's one more thing. You're always hungry. And so that only leaves the one option. Mwah! I give up. Don't make me feel guilty. If you feel guilty, that means you deserve to feel guilty. <laughs> Yuri suddenly giggles. Eh? I didn't notice that she was listening in. Her face is in her book as always. Ah! I wasn't listening or anything. It was just something in my book. Yuri! Tell Lauren to let me borrow some money! That's... Don't get me involved like that, Sayori. Besides... You should only but You should only buy what you can responsibly afford. And frankly, after pulling a mischievous little stunt like that, your suffering is fair enough retribution. Ah... Uh, did I just... I didn't mean that. I got too absorbed into my book. <laughs> I really like when you speak your mind, Yuri. Doesn't happen much, but it's a fun sight of you. That's... there's no way you could think that. You were right, though. I did something bad, and now I have to accept the revolution. Retribution. That! Still, coming from you, Sayori. I guess there's a little devil inside all of us, isn't there? <laughs> Don't let her fool you. Sayori knows exactly what she's doing. After all, she told you guys she was bringing me to the club before she even told me. But, you wouldn't have come if it weren't for the cupcakes. So I had to trick Natsuki into making them. Come on, give me more credit than that, Sayori. Eh <laughs> Quap. Kya! Out of nowhere, something smacks Sayori in the face and tumbles onto the desk. Ow! What was... eh? A cookie? Sure enough, it's a giant cookie wrapped in plastic. Sayori glances around. I is this a miracle? It's because I paid my restitution. Retribution. Actually, that one almost worked. <laughs> I was just going to give it to you. But then I heard you blab about the cupcakes. It was totally worth seeing your reaction, though. <laughs> Natsuki? That's so nice of you. I'm so happy. Sayori hugs the cookie. Jeez, just eat it. Sayori rapidly tears open the wrapper and takes a big bite. So good. Oh. Sayori suddenly clasps her hands over her mouth. I bit my tongue. <laughs> You're going through a lot over just one cookie. 
Natsuki takes a bite of her own cookie. Uh, yours looks really good too, Natsuki. Can I try it? Jeez. Beggars can't be choosers. But yours is chocolate. Yeah, why do you think I gave you that one? Fine. Still, I'm really happy that you shared this one with me. <laughs> Sayuri gets out of her seat and goes behind Natsuki, then wraps her arms around her. I ship it. Ah, jeez. I get it, I get it. Cookie still on hand, Natsuki reaches up to nudge Sayori off her. Um. Sayori suddenly leans down and takes a bite out of Natsuki's cookie. H hey! Did you seriously just do that? <laughs> Mouthful, Sayori trots away to safety. Also, I apologize, my dog is making many noises because he wants more dog food. But he can't have any. No. Yuri and I laugh as well. Jeez, you're such a kid sometimes. Monica, can you tell Sayori? Eh? Natsuki glances around. Monica isn't in the club room. Ugh. Where's Monica anyway? Good question. Have any of you heard anything about her being late today? Not me. Yeah, I haven't either. Hmm. That's a bit unusual. I hope she's okay. Of course she's okay. She probably just had something to do today. She's pretty popular after all. Eh? You don't think she... She has a... <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. She's probably more desirable than all of us combined. I mean, she's pretty good. But, I don't know. <laughs> That's true. Excuse me? Suddenly, the door swings open. Sorry, I'm super sorry. Ah, there you are. I didn't mean to be late. I got worried that this is where the horror was gonna start or something. I hope you guys weren't worried or anything. Eh? Huh? Monica chose the club over her boyfriend after all. You're so strong-willed. Boyfriend? What on earth are you talking about? Monica quizzically glances at me. Uh, never mind that. What held you up anyway? Uh, well, my last period today was study hall. To be honest, I kind of just lost track of time. Uh -huh. That makes no sense, though. You would have heard the bell ring at least. I must have not heard it since I was practicing piano. Piano? I wasn't aware you played music as well, Monica. Oh, I don't really. It kind of just started recently. I've always wanted to learn piano. That's so cool. You should play something for us, Monica. That's... Monica looks at me. Maybe once I get a little bit better, I will. Yay! That sounds cool. I'd also look forward to it. Is that so? In that case, I won't let you down, Lauren. Monica smiles sweetly. I'd date you if I could. I didn't mean any pressure or anything like that. <laughs> Don't worry. I've been practicing a whole lot recently, and I'd really love the chance to share once I'm ready. I see. In that case, best of luck. Thanks! So I didn't miss anything, did I? Not... not really. I choose to leave out Sayori's mischievous escapade. I'm sure Natsuki will end up complaining to her anyway. Looks like everyone has already settled down. Sayori somehow already finished her entire cookie. Yuri's back to her book and Natsuki disappeared into the closet. What does Natsuki do in the closet? Just find manga or what? Hey, Yuri. Huh? Uh, I suddenly notice that Yuri is reading a different book from the one we've been reading together. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Ah, uh, no. I was kind of just waiting for you. Uh, that's the case. Why don't we go ahead and get started? Yes, let's. Actually, I have a request. Do you mind if I make some tea first? Not at all. Thanks very much. If there's one thing that can make my reading time here any better, it's a nice cup of tea. Not to mention for yourself as well. Yuri stands up and makes her way to the closet. 
I follow and watch as she retrieves a small water pitcher from the shelf, the kind with a filter inside. Can you hold this for a second? Sure. Yuri hands me the water pitcher and also fetches an electric kettle. I'm going to plug this in at the teacher's desk and then we'll go get some water. She walks past me and sets the kettle down on the teacher's desk. I simply watch her movements. To my surprise, the way she moves really contrasts her speaking mannerisms. Especially because of her long legs, Yuri appears elegant and methodical. Okay, may I have the water pitcher? Thanks, I'll be right back. I might as well walk with you. Yeah, why not? Shall we go then? Yeah. Huh? Where are you two off to? Huh? Eh? We're just... Yuri was gonna make some tea, so... I suddenly realize how weird it sounds to explain this to Monica. We're just filling the water pitcher. Oh, okay. Sorry, I was just a bit curious. That's kind of a one-person job, isn't it? Uh, that's... Monica, please mind your own business for once. Or do you want to tell me there's something wrong with helping involve Lauren in club activities? Oh, jeez, she is, uh... <laughs> something. My mouth gapes. I... I suppose there's nothing wrong with that. Hmm. Then let's go, Lauren. Uh... Yuri quickly exits the room and I follow. I didn't... <laughs> I didn't know she was like this. Once in the hallway, she suddenly puts her forehead against the wall. I spoke without thinking. How could I say something like that? Yuri... I just... Something about the way she said that... Made me feel so irritated. What's wrong with me? No, Yuri, I, I mean, I don't know, it's a little bit harsh. I think you did the right thing. I mean, I don't know, I could've, I don't know. I wasn't expecting it, but... It's also not right for Monica to judge people like that. I'm okay with people speaking their minds once in a while. I don't know, it just seemed a little harsh. Lauren, how come even when I do something bad, you're being nice to me? Because... Nothing that you do is as bad as you make it seem in your head. Nobody's perfect. We have emotions and we can't always hide them away. But you always amplify things in your head. Your mind turns a light rain shower into a hurricane. Uh, no. Wouldn't you hate me for something as terrible as that? Why would I hate you? I can't hate someone for having emotions. What kind of friend would do that? friend, you say. Um... Yuri lifts her head. Lauren, I really like being friends with you. <laughs> Thanks, Yuri. I like being friends with you, too. I feel kind of awkward saying something like that, but I'm doing my best to help Yuri feel better. Anyway. Uh, yeah. Shall we go? Yeah. This is awkward enough. Yuri and I walk to the nearest water fountain. Once we fill up the water pitcher, we return to the classroom. Lauren, do you like oolong tea? Uh, yeah. Anything is fine. Very well. Yuri sets the temperature on the kettle to 200 degrees. Now it's time to get the teapot. You really do this properly, don't you? Of course. I shouldn't do any less when I'm making tea for others. Even if I'm not an expert on tea or anything? <laughs> In that case, you'll only be even more impressed. Ah, uh, perhaps I will. Yuri fetches the teapot and begins measuring the tea leaves. To my surprise, she even starts humming a little to herself. You must be in a good mood now. Is that so? I was letting it show. And you noticed. I was doing a bit of thinking. And I decided that I would try expressing myself a little bit more. It turns out it's not very hard for me to do. When it's you who's around, anyway. Ah, uh, that's great, Yuri. Just don't push yourself too much. I guess as long as she expresses herself a little bit at a time, she won't snap and express herself really harshly. You're always worrying about me, Lauren. It's very endearing. That's... Yuri wasn't kidding. 
I don't even know if I could keep up with this. I watch Yuri pour a cup of tea for each of us. Lauren, I have another request. Do you mind if we sit on the floor today? I mean, I guess, whatever. Yeah, why is that? It's a little bit easier on my back. I can read with my back against the wall rather than bending over at my desk. Ah, uh, sorry, I didn't realize. No worries. I just have back pain fairly regularly, so I do my best to manage it. Is that so? I wonder why that is. It's most likely because of my... Well, I mean, I have back pain too, and I'm like, what, 22? Ah. Uh, my... Oh. I get it. Your posture, right? Yeah. <laughs> Always hunched over like that while reading. Yes! That's definitely what it is. I have terrible reading posture. So that's why we should sit on the floor. <laughs> Fair enough! I'll go ahead and get the book. I retrieved the book from my bag. Ah, I have some chocolate as well. It's a- I mean, you know, with what she's dealing with, it's probably good to have some chocolates. It's a bag of small chocolate candies that I kept hidden from Sayuri's candy radar. I take it since they'll go well with the tea. Yuri and I then sit against the wall, teacups at our sides. As if in sync, we assume the same reading position as last time, each holding half the book. Except this time, our bodies are even closer to each other. I can't see too well. Yuri slides closer until our shoulders are touching. How am I supposed to focus on reading like this? Yuri was always kind of cute, but when she's being less apprehensive, it's almost more than I could handle. Your teacup. Yuri hands me my teacup. Oh, I thought there was something wrong with it. Holding with my hand that's not holding the book, I end up in a position that makes it even harder to focus. Because now I need to worry about making sure I don't actually touch her chest. Accidentally touch her chest and touch her bazongas. Meanwhile, Yuri hasn't noticed a single thing. She wears her intense reading expression, and I could only presume that the world around her has faded away. I use all of my willpower to focus on reading. After a few minutes, I finally manage to relax a little. I put the teacups between my legs and fumble with the chocolate wrapper. Uh, sorry. I briefly let go of the book to finish opening the wrapper. You can have as much as you want. Ah, uh, that's... That's okay, I won't take any. Ah, uh, are you sure? Well, if I touch it, then I might get smudges on the pages. Ah, uh, you're right. I didn't even think about that. My bad. No need to apologize. I'll hold the book, okay? Are you sure? Of course. Yuri opens the book with both hands. She holds it so they don't have a harder time reading from it. But as a result, her left arm is practically resting on top of my leg. Well, in that case, Yuri is already totally focused on reading again. I take a chocolate candy and pop it into my mouth. Oh, then I take another chocolate and put it into her mouth, seductively. And I hold it up to Yuri. <laughs> She doesn't even look away from the book. She simply parts her lips as if the situation was completely natural. But that means I can't stop here. No. I apprehensively place the chocolate in her mouth at just the corner. Because we can't have it too secure in there. Just like that, Yuri closes her lips over it. Huh? Yuri's expression suddenly breaks. Did... Did I just... Yuri looks at me like she needs to confirm what just happened. Um... Lauren... Sorry! I guess I shouldn't have done that. Uh, that's... Well... You were just helping. That's something that friends do. Right? I mean... Not really in this kind of context, but sure, yeah. Yeah. That's all it was. Yeah. Then... 
You don't need to stop or anything. I see. The situation has gotten really tense. <laughs> Yuri tries to return to the book. But I can tell just by her expression that even she can't focus now. My heart is pounding. I nervously take another chocolate between my fingers. But this time Yuri's eyes meet mine. Hmm. How did it even come to this? Yuri doesn't avert her gaze. I notice her chest rising and falling to the rhythm, rhythm of her breaths. Not like that's an excuse to look at her boobs or anything. I raise my arm. Ah. Uh, like before, Yuri parts her lips. But it's different this time. <laughs> I take the chocolate and place it in her mouth. I feel her hot breath on my fingers. Okay, everyone! <laughs> Here he jolts back. It's time to share poems. Lauren, you can help Yuri put away the tea stuff, right? Yeah, of course. Okay, thanks. Thanks, Monica. The spell is abruptly broken. I'll... I'll take care of the cups. Yeah. Yuri picks up the teacups from the floor. I pick up the bag of chocolates. In the end, we hastily clean up without so much as a word between us. I get the feeling this is something neither of us will have the courage to bring up. Let's share with Yuri, just like usual. Let's see what you've written for today. Yuri stares at the poem with a surprised expression on her face. Do you like it? Lauren. This one might be even better than yesterday's. How did you even pick up on this so quickly? Just yesterday I was telling you the kind of techniques worth practicing. Maybe that's why. You did a good job of explaining. I really wanted to try and give it more imagery. Yuri visibly swallows. Even her hands appear sweaty. Knees weak. I'm not used to this. Used to what? I don't know. It's fine, take your time. Yuri breathes and collects her thoughts. I know that Yuri likes to think before she speaks, so I offer that patience to her. Yeah, just being appreciated like that, I guess. It probably sounds really stupid, but seeing someone motivated by my writing just makes me really happy. Are you <laughs> are you saying you've never shared your writing before? Yuri nods. Really? I don't believe it. I really only write for myself. And besides, people would just laugh at me. Do, do you really think that? Again, Yuri nods. Huh. Even your close friends? Yuri doesn't respond to that, because she has no friends. I wonder why. Anyway, do you want to share the poem you wrote today? Yeah, I do. If it's with you. The raccoon. It happened in the dead of night while I was slicing bread for a guilty snack. My attention was caught by a scattering of raccoon outside my window. That was, I believe, the first time I noticed my strange tendencies as an unordinary human. I gave the raccoon a piece of bread. Oops, oh. Piece of bread my subconscious, well aware of the consequences. Well aware that a raccoon that is fed will always come back for more. The enticing beauty of my cutting knife was the symptom. The bread, my hungry curiosity. The raccoon, an urge. The moon increments its phase and reflects that much more light off my cutting knife. The same, the very same light that glistens in the eyes of my raccoon friend. I slice the bread fresh and soft, the raccoon becomes excited. Or perhaps I'm merely projecting my emotions onto the newly satisfied animal. The raccoon has taken to following me. You could say that we've gotten quite used to each other. The raccoon becomes hungry more and more frequently, so my bread is always handy. Every time I brandish my cutting knife, the raccoon shows me its excitement. A rush of blood. Classic pav Pavlovian conditioning. I slice the bread and I feed myself again. Um, I was a little more daring with this one than yesterday's. Yeah, it seemed a little bit more obscure. I can see that. 
It's a lot more metaphorical. I don't know if it's my fault, but I can't begin to imagine what this poem is about. That's right. It's a bit closer to my preferred writing style. Using the poem as a canvas to express vivid imagery and conveying emotions through them. Yeah, if I take it at face value, then I can't even figure out what it's supposed to mean. Well, I think it's something that different people can relate to in their own way. I wanted to express the way it feels for me to indulge in my more unusual hobbies. It's those sorts of things I'm usually forced to keep to myself, so I sometimes enjoy writing about them. Why do you keep them to yourself? Because they're embarrassing, and people would make fun of me. Don't you have anything like that, Lauren? Well, yeah, I guess I do. I play dating sims in my spare time. I feel like everyone has a little something like that. The best we can do is respect each other and our individualities. Even if it's difficult sometimes, and some things make us uncomfortable. After all, if I hadn't learned to embrace my own weirdness, I'd probably hate myself. I might be ranting a little bit now, but I'm glad that you're a good listener. You're good at a lot of things. Writing, listening... There really aren't many people like you, Lauren. That's exaggerating a little bit. It's just how I feel. I never thought I would feel so comfortable sharing my writing, but now I almost feel like I look forward to it. It's just a really nice feeling. And you're to thank for that. It's nothing, really. Yuri smiles sincerely at me. For just a moment, her timidness seems to disappear. Okay, let's show it to Sayori, just like usual. Ooh, I like this one, Lauren. It has some nice feelings in it. Oh, I'm glad. Does that mean it's better than yesterday's? Mm, let me think. I don't know. I guess I like them both. Hehehe. <laughs> That's not very helpful, you know. Well, I'm not very good at figuring out if poems are good or bad. But that's why I just go by my heart. If it makes me feel things, then it must be a good poem. I'm not sure that's exactly how it works. Then again, I guess conveying feelings is a pretty important part of this whole thing. Yeah, maybe. Honestly, I don't even know what kind of writing you like in the first place. Yeah, me neither. Ugh. Why don't you at least try giving it some thought? Why does she have to do that? She could like whatever she wants. Ah, uh, you want to write something for me? That's so sweet. Yeah, right. But you're always thinking about other people. You need to think about yourself once in a while. If you don't, you might end up getting you might end up getting hurt at some point. Eh? Well, I don't really know what you mean, but I'll try to keep it in mind. Well, whatever. Anyway, let's see. Hmm. I guess I like happy poems. Wait, sometimes I like sad poems, too. Maybe that's all it is with the sad thing, is she just likes to read different things. I don't know. Sometimes a little bit of both. There's a word for that, right? What's the word I'm looking for? Bittersweet. Yeah. I like things that are happy and things that are sad. Happy and sad? I can't see you liking something sad, Sayori. Well, I like happy the most, but sometimes when you have a little rain cloud in your head, a sad poem can help give the rain cloud a little hug and make a nice happy rainbow. Sayori, that's unexpectedly poetic. Eh, it is. Maybe I'm getting better at expressing my feelings after all. Thanks, Lauren. I should go write that down then. You could read my poem now, okay? Bottles. I pop off my scalp like the lid of a cookie jar, and it's a secret place where I keep all my dreams. Little balls of sunshine all rubbing together like a bundle of kittens. I reach inside with my thumb and forefinger and pluck one out. It's warm and tingly, but there's no time to waste. I put it in a bottle to keep it safe, and I put the bottle on the shelf with all the other bottles. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts and bottles all in a row. My collection makes lots makes me lots of friends. Each bottle is starlight to make amends. Sometimes my friend feels a certain way. Down comes a bottle to save the day. Night after night, more dreams. Friend after friend, more bottles. Deeper and deeper my fingers go. 
like exploring a dark cave, discovering the secrets, hiding in the nooks and crannies, digging and digging, scraping and scraping. I blow dust off my bottle caps. It doesn't feel like time elapsed. My empty shelf could use some more. My friends look through my locked front door. Finally, I all alone, all done. I open up and in come my friends. And they come in such a hurry. Do they want my bottles that much? I frantically pull them from the shelf, one after the other, holding them out to each and every friend, each and every bottle. But every time I let one go, it shatters against the tile between my feet. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts, and shards all over the floor. They were supposed to be for my friends, my friends who aren't smiling. They're all shouting, pleading something, but all I hear is echo, 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 echo inside my head. That's pretty deep and kind of dark. Holy crap. Sayuri, did you really write this? Of course I did. Didn't I tell you yesterday I was going to write the best poem ever? Yeah, but I mean, I didn't expect something like this coming from you. Monica taught me a whole lot. And I've been really in touch with my feelings recently. I see that. It's almost kind of creepy. Creepy? Well, not exactly. I mean, it's a little sad that if she's in touch with her feelings and that's what she came up with, that she's trying to make everyone else happy at her own expense. Maybe because I'm so used to you being cheerful. Well, never mind. I'm thinking too hard about it. The point is, it came out good, so you should be proud of it. Aw, oh, thanks. I feel like... I feel like I was meant to express myself this way. It even helps me understand my own feelings a little bit better. Writing is like magic. You've gotten pretty passionate about this, huh? I hope you keep it up. Yeah! Writing's the best. I'm gonna keep writing until I die. <laughs> don't get ahead of yourself. Sayuri's always had a habit of getting obsessed with something before dropping it no more than a week later. I wonder if this is one of those times. But seeing the passion in her eyes makes it hard for me to be pessimistic. Let's show it to... Monica this time. Hi again, Lauren. How's the writing going? Alright, I guess. I'll take that. As long as it's not going bad. I'm happy that you're applying yourself. Maybe soon you'll come up with a masterpiece. <laughs> I wouldn't count on that. You never know. Wanna share what you wrote for today? Sure, here you go. I give my poem to Monica. Alright. This one's good. It feels like you're not only getting more comfortable with your style, but the imagery is better than the last one I read. Just wondering, but have you been finding inspiration in Yuri's writing style? Hmm. I guess so. You can't deny that she's talented. Yeah, totally. I think her poems are the most... romantic. That's the best way to describe it. She's like a totally different person when she picks up a pen. I noticed that too. Or when she's talking about literature, it's like a light turns on inside of her. Mm-hmm. Sadly, it's hard to get much personal conversation out of her. Trust me, I've tried. Who knows what goes on inside that head of hers? I hope you don't mean that in a bad way. No, of course not. I just meant that I wish she didn't keep so much to herself. But still, defending her like that... You must be pretty into her. Eh? You completely misunderstood. <laughs> Calm down, I'm kidding. Besides, I'm pretty sure she's already got a boyfriend. Wait, really? I mean, Yuri? I mean, she doesn't seem to talk to anyone. Oh, well, of course. Yeah, a fictional one, anyway. Monica kind of whispers that last part to me. It's just a hunch, but... Well, there's not really anything wrong with that. Oh, well, I know. I was just saying... But anyway, you want to read my poem now? I like the way this one turned out, so I hope you do too. Alright, well, let's take a look. Save me. The colors, they won't stop. Bright, beautiful colors, flashing, expanding, piercing. Red, green, blue, an endless cacophony of meaningless noise. The noise, it won't stop. Violent, grating waveforms, squeaking, screeching, piercing. Sine, cosine, tangent. Like playing a chalkboard on a turntable, like playing a vinyl on a pizza crust. An endless poem of meaningless. Load me. Oh, I thought it was gonna be something. <laughs> Sounds like when I get uh, too much um, auditory stimulation. Hmm. 
It's even more abstract than your last one, huh? <laughs> I guess it's just the way I write. I'm sorry if you don't like it. No, I never said that. It's just a kind of thing I've never really seen before, I guess. I kind of like playing with my space on the paper. Yeah, I could see that. Choosing where and how to space your words can totally change the mood of the poem. It's almost like magic. The way I wrote the lines really short makes it feel like they're trying to speak over the noise. I see. It's still hard for me to tell what it's about, though. <laughs> Sometimes asking what a poem is about isn't the right question. A poem can be as abstract as a physical expression of a feeling. Or a conversation with the reader. So putting it that way, not every poem is about something. Anyway. Here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Sometimes you'll find yourself facing a difficult decision. When that happens, don't forget to save your game. You never know when you might change your mind. Or when something unexpected may happen. Wait, is this tip even about writing? No! What am I even talking about? <laughs> That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. Okay. Hmm. Huh. Sorry, my mic is fallen. Well, I can admit that it's better than the last one. It's nice to see that you're putting in some effort. That's good. But I still don't like this at all. It's trying too hard to be serious. Eh, what do you mean by that? Poems don't need to be all deep sounding to express something. It's going to just sound like you're forcing it unless you really don't suck at it. Honestly, don't bother trying to write poems like this until you're on Yuri's level. Not till you stop short all of a sudden. D don't tell me. Huh? You're not... You're not just trying to impress Yuri, are you? What are you talking about? And keep your voice down. You know Yuri would love this kind of... This angsty... Just because she's a talented writer doesn't mean... I mean... Oh, looks like I'm in trouble. I somehow struck a nerve, even though what I did is beyond me. I am so done with you. Natsuki shoves the poem I handed her back over to me. Take your stupid poem. If you wrote it for someone else, just don't show it to me. Ouch. This is what I get for letting a younger girl step into my business. Unless I was a mind reader, I was destined to be in a world of pain from the start. At least Natsuki wasn't really the girl I was trying to impress in the first place. What, am I not going to be able to read Natsuki's poem? I want to read it. Okay, everyone. We're all done reading each other's poems, right? I have something extra planned today, so if everyone can come sit at the front of the room... Sorry, my mic is falling again. Is this about the festival? Well, sort of. Uh, do we really have to do something for the festival? It's not like we can put together anything good in just a few days. We'll just end up embarrassing ourselves instead of getting any new members. That's a concern of mine as well. I don't really do well with last minute preparations. Don't worry so much. We're going to keep it simple, okay? We won't need much more than a few decorations. Sari has been working on making posters and I've designed some pamphlets we could give out during the event. Okay, that's great and all. But that doesn't tell us what we're actually going to be doing for the event. Ah, uh, sorry, I thought you heard about it already. We're going to be performing. Performing? <sighs> um, Monica? Yeah, we're going to be having a poetry performance. Each of us are going to choose a poem to recite during the event. But the cool part is, we're also going to let anyone else come up and recite poems too. Sari's putting it all on the posters in case anyone wants to prepare ahead of time. I wish we could have prepared ahead of time. Hehe. <laughs> Sayori, who's been coloring a poster, holds it up for us to see. Are you kidding me, Monica? You didn't... You didn't already start putting those posters up, did you? Eh, uh, well, I did. Do you really think it's that bad of an idea? Well, no. It's not a bad idea. But I didn't sign up for this, you know. There's no way I'm going to be performing in front of a group of people like that. I, I agree with Natsuki. I could never in my life do something like that. Imagining it, Yuri shakes her head in fear. Guys! No, Sayori. I understand where they're coming from. 
Remember that Natsuki and Yuri have never shared their poems with anyone until just a couple days ago. It's a lot to ask for them to recite their poems out loud to a whole room of people. I guess I kind of overlooked that. So I'm sorry. But, I still think we should give it our best. We're the only ones responsible for the fate of this club. If we start the event and put on a good performance, then we'll inspire others to do the same. Don't poke Natsuki's eye out. And the more people who perform, the better we'll be able to show everyone what literature is all about. Yeah! It's about expressing your feelings, being intimate with yourself, finding new horizons, and having fun. That's right. And it's those reasons that we're all in this club today. Don't you want to share that with others? To inspire them or to find the same feelings that brought you here in the first place? I know you do. I know we all do. And if all it takes is standing in front of the room for two minutes and reciting a poem, then I know you can do it. Natsuki and Yuri remain silent. What an inspiring speech. Sayori looks worried. I guess that leaves me no choice. I agree. I don't think it's too much to ask. I think that Sayori and Monica have been trying really hard to get new members. The least we can do is help them out a little bit. Well, maybe, but... It looks like Natsuki doesn't have any arguments left. Uh... Okay, fine. I guess I'll just have to get it over with. Alright! Yeah. <sighs> Thanks, Natsuki. What about you, Yuri? Yuri dejectedly glances around at everyone else's expectant faces. Huh. <sighs> I guess I don't really have a choice. <laughs> That's everyone! Okay, well, you're the best, Yuri. This club is seriously going to be the death of me. Oh gosh! You'll be fine, Yuri. But anyway, let's move on to the main event. I want each of you to choose a poem of yours. We're going to practice reciting them in front of each other. No way! Monica... This is too sudden. Well, if you can't recite your poem in front of the club, how do you expect to do it in front of strangers? Oh no. Don't worry. I'll start off to help everyone feel a little more comfortable. Can I go next? <laughs> of course. Now let's see. Monica flips through her notebook to the specific poem she has in mind for herself. She then stands behind the podium. The title of this poem is The Way They Fly. Ahem. Monica begins reciting her poem. Her clear, confident voice fills the room. Fills the room. More than that, her inflection is pristine. She knows exactly how to apply emotion behind each line she recites, bringing the words to life. Is this something she's done before, or is she simply a natural? I glance around me. Everyone has their eyes on Monica. Sayori looks amazed. Yuri has an intense expression on her face that I don't understand. Finally, Monica finishes the rec recitation. The four of us applaud. Monica takes a breath and smiles. That... that was so good, Monica! <laughs> Thank you very much. I was just hoping to set a good example. Are you ready to go next, Sayori? Uh, I'll go next. Wah! Yuri's fired up all of a sudden! Yuri clutches a sheet of paper between her hands and stands up. Keeping her head down, she walks quickly over to the podium. This poem is called... Yuri anxiously glances at each of us. You can do it, Yuri. It's called... After Image of a Crimson Eye. Yuri's voice shakes as she starts reading the poem. Just a moment ago, she practically refused to do this. Why is she suddenly putting in so much effort? As Yuri gets past the first couple of lines, her voice changes. It's almost like when hap- oh. Let's, uh, let's answer the phone real quick. Let's see what's going on. Hi. Okay, sorry about that. Had a phone call. It's almost like what happens when Yuri gets absorbed into her books. Her quivering words transform into the sharp syllables of a fierce and confident woman. The poem is full of twists and turns in its structure that she enunciates with perfect timing. This must be a rare glimpse into the whirling fire Yuri keeps concealed inside her head. Suddenly, she's finished. Everyone is stunned. 
Yuri snaps back into reality and glances around her as if she'd be bewildered even herself. I... It's up to me to save the situation. I'm the first to start applauding. Everyone joins me afterward and we give Yuri the recognition she deserves. It's not that we didn't want to applaud for her, but we were caught so off guard that we must have forgotten. As we applaud, Yuri holds the poem to her chest and rushes back to her seat. Yuri, that was really good. Thank you for sharing. Looks like Yuri is down for the count. <laughs> okay! I guess I'm next, then. Sayuri hops out of her chair and cheerfully walks to the podium. This one's called My Meadow. Ah. Uh, Ahaha! <laughs> Sorry, I giggled. Hehehe. <laughs> Sayori. It's a lot harder than I thought. How did you guys do it so easily? Ah. Uh, try not to think of it like you're reciting to other people. Imagine you're reciting it to yourself, like in front of a mirror or in your own head. It's your poem, so it'll come out in the best that way. I see, I see. Okay, then. Sayuri begins her poem. Somehow it feels like her soft voice was made as a perfect match. The poem isn't aimlessly cheery like Sayori is. It's serene and bittersweet. If I were to read this on paper, I probably wouldn't think much of it. But hearing it come from Sayori's voice almost gives it a whole new meaning. Maybe this is what Sayori meant when she said she likes my poems. It's like I get to reach more deeply into someone I thought I knew through and through. Sayori finishes and we applaud. I did it! Good job, Sayori. Hehe, <laughs> even Lauren liked it. I guess that's a good sign. What does that even mean? It came out nicely, Sayori. The atmosphere of the poem fits you really nicely. But it might be that other poems wouldn't work quite as well with that kind of delivery. Eh, I don't really understand. In other words, I've seen poems of yours where that sort of gentle delivery wouldn't work as well. They might need a little more force behind them depending on what you're reading. Oh, I know what you mean. That's, well, I've been practicing that kind of thing. It's just embarrassing to do it in front of everyone. He <laughs> oh, my mic is falling. Why is it doing this all of a sudden? The next time, I'm going to make you pick a poem that challenges you a little more. We don't have much time before the festival, you know? Okay. Now, who's next? Natsuki? Hmm. <laughs> don't make me go before Lauren. It's not like I can compare to you guys anyway. Might as well let Lauren lower everyone's standards a little before I have to do it. Natsuki. It's fine, it's fine. I might as well get it over with. But it's not like I have much of a selection of what to read. I'll just have to go with what I wrote for today. I stand up and step in front of the podium. Everyone has their eyes on me, making me feel terribly awkward. I recite my poem. Since I'm not exactly confident in my own writing, it's hard to put energy into it. Despite that, once I finish, I receive applause anyway. Sorry I'm not really as good as everyone else. Don't worry about it so much. I think it's less about your abilities and more about your lack of confidence in your writing. That's something that'll improve over time, though. Yeah, maybe. All right, then. That just leaves you, Natsuki. Yeah, yeah. I'm going. Natsuki begrudgingly gets out of her seat and makes her way to the podium. The poem is called... It's called... Why are you all looking at me? Because you're presenting? Hmm. <laughs> anyway, the poem is called Jump. Natsuki takes a breath. Once she starts reciting the poem, her sour attitude disappears a little. While she's still a little unenthused, her poem has a rhythm and rhyme to it. It's Natsuki's trademark style, and it works surprisingly well when spoken aloud. The words feel like they're they bounce up and down as if giving life to the poem. Natsuki finishes and everyone applauds. She huffs back to her seat. That wasn't so bad, was it? Easy for you to say. You'd better not make me do that again. Ah, uh, well... Do you at least feel prepared enough to recite a poem in front of other people? I mean, doing it in front of other people would be way easier. I can put on whatever face I want for other people. But when it's just my friends, it's just embarrassing. Aw, she considers us her friends, though. That's a surprise, Natsuki. I think it'd be the other way around for me. Well, that's just how it is, so... Well, I guess in that case, you won't have much to worry about for the festival. That said, I want to thank everyone for coming through. 
It might be hard, but I hope that you all have an idea of what it's like now. Make sure you pick a poem and get enough practice before the festival, okay? I'll be making pamphlets, so let me know ahead of time what you'll be reciting. Jeez. I should probably find some other poem to recite instead. That's fine, too. It doesn't have to be your own. I'm already pleasantly surprised that you're putting in all this effort for the club. It makes me really happy. Uh, yeah, no problem. Okay, everyone. I think that's about it for today. I know the festival is coming up, but let's try to write poems for tomorrow as well. It's been working out really nicely so far, so I'd like to continue that. As for the festival, we'll finish planning tomorrow, and then we'll have the weekend to prepare. Monday is the big day. I can't wait. I can do this. I can do this. All right. I stand up. There's no way I'll be able to find the same enthusiasm as Sayori and Monica, but I'll do my best to get through it. If it's for the sake of the club, and impressing Monica, then I'll have to do my best. Ready to go, Sayori? Yep. Look at you two, always going home together like that. It's kind of adorable, isn't it? Hehe. <laughs> Jeez, guys. Don't make such a big deal out of it. It must be a little nice, though. Well, uh... How am I supposed to respond to that? It's okay, Lauren. You don't have to say it. Whatever. Let's go already. I walk home with Sayori once more. Even though it's only been a few days, a lot of things have already changed. But today, Sayori is, Sayori is being a little quieter than usual on the way home. Hey, Sayori. Sorry, I was spacing out. Uh, no wonder. Um, I was thinking about something from earlier. I like how we get to... I mean... Sayori fumbles with her words. So, let's just say that one day, Yuri asked to walk home with you. Huh? What would you do? What kind of question is that? You're kind of putting me on the spot here. <laughs> well, oh uh, no. Why can't I walk home with both of them? Walking home with Yuri, huh? Why is it thought that make my heart pound? I mean, given how hard it is for her to socialize, I would feel awful turning her down, so... Isn't she so beautiful and smart? That has nothing to do with what I just said. Haha, <laughs> you admitted it! Jeez. There's no, not even any point in speculating something that's never going to happen. Well, maybe. But I just like to think about it. It's not long before you won't need me anymore, you know? Need you? Sayori, I can't figure out how you're seeing things in your head right now. Sorry. Everyone is different. Nobody in the club is a replacement for you. Hmm. If you say so. The conversation trails off and I'm left feeling awkward. But it was kind of her fault for trapping me with such a weird question. I can't just lie to her. But if there's something that makes her happy, I would hate to take that away from her. That's why I said there's no point in speculating. Then again, the festival is only a few days away. Who knows what will happen in that time. Okay, it's pulling time. These episodes just keep getting longer and longer and I apologize. Imagination... Essence. Uh, graveyard. Yeah. Waterfall? Oh, nope. Um, passion? Nope. Oh boy. Vivacious. Um, disoriented. Incapable. Let's see. Analysis, ambient, depression. Oops, I forgot that that uh, Sayori's depression. Massacre, fallible, judgment, after image, philosophy, starscape, and uncanny. All right, guys. I will pick this up again next time. Thank you guys for joining me. Um, so far, so good, I guess. Uh, nothing bad's happened and nothing to worry about. Uh, we'll just keep dating Yuri and see where it goes. Keep dating like we started dating. Anyways, we'll keep going with Yuri and see how it goes from there. But thank you guys again. I'll see you again next time.